car breaks down. I need to borrow a phone, left my phone at home. Petey. Jeez, McKee, what are you doing What's here? going on? It's my place. I broke down outside. Oh, you yeah. broke down. Can yeah, you yeah we can fix that. Right. Yeah, this, uh, this isn't good. You got a battery in here. Uh, careful, Jay. You don't need another staph infection. Oh, you got a lot of crap in here, huh? Sure do. You got a grill too, huh? You want to fire that up in the meantime? Yeah, let's sauce some pucks and fire up the grill. Let's do it. Yeah, I think if you go through the window, it's three points. If you go up over the van and in the net, that's two points. Dent the van, you should get five points. Well, I think I might get the first shot. Five pointer, dent. <laughs> I forgot about the five point dent. Oh, I can't that's even. off the tire. I can't, I can't dent a tire. I can't even raise it. It hasn't changed. Yeah, that's uh, seven houses down. I don't think that classifies as a point. <laughs> that right there, the post. that's 10th round OHL pick, Jay McKee, right there. Was that? that first round pick, Jay McKee, right there? Oh, 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 that's a good follow up. That would be funny if you got them walking by going, Are you Jay McKee? You were my favorite player. Who? <laughs> that's terrible. I don't think they were born when I was playing. When you were a rookie, did you ever have issues being on time? My first year, Ted Nolan was a coach, and we practiced out at Saberland sometimes, out in Wheatfield. I thought we were downtown. I lived downtown, so I was five minutes away from the arena. I was so scared to be late uh, for Ted Nolan. I literally had thoughts of having a small fender bender, creating a small fender bender with somebody just, you know, at a stoplight or something, just, just so I had a reason to be late. Well I, well, I think I won the forehand challenge. Let's go make some food. You got any uh, awesome. cheese and bread in that uh, house of yours? I got some cheese and bread. Let's go make some grilled cheese. How do you get the nickname Cheese? The nickname I think it's cheese. a mystery to me all these years too. When I started in Buffalo, I was uh, I was young. I played my first game at 18 and, and first full season at 19 and I did a lot of cheesy things. Right straight through 14 years of an NHL career, I'm in Pittsburgh and, and, and my last season and Sidney Crosby's calling me the Cheese. Did uh, guys screw with you a lot your rookie year, pranks and stuff? My first year, all my clothes taken out of a stall on the road and put up in basically in the rafters. So I, you had that done, do you? Oh yeah, yeah, I think we were in St. Louis and you know, someone just said, go up to the top row, you'll find your gear, your clothes. So what are some of the better pranks that you have done? Mark andre Fleury drove a uh, Lamborghini Diablo and it was his pride and joy and, and uh, we had our, our practice the one day and I got off the ice right after practice. I ran outside and I, I grabbed the keys out of his stall and I took his Lamborghini and I put it around the other side of the arena by a dumpster that he would never find and he goes out to find his car, he comes back in, looks around the room, puts his hands up in the air and says, excuse me, uh, does anyone know my, my Lamborghini is? And I did the same thing actually to, to Marty. Marty had a house party. The Halloween party. The, the Halloween <laughs> party. And I hit the uh, garage door opener and, and backed her out. Parked it right in the middle of the neighbor's lawn, turned on the music and left. I also took off all the labels from his uh, canned soup. And, <laughs> and then uh, in the middle of doing that, Marty came in, hit a button on the wall, the music stopped and he says, excuse me, does anybody know where my Porsche is? <laughs> Forget about the money and signing in St. Louis leaving Buffalo because you, I remember, you did not want to leave. You were basically offering a hometown discount to stay. My UFA year uh, was probably the best hockey year of, of my life. thought I established who I was over 10 years in Buffalo and, and I had wanted to re-sign mid-season. When you get to the point of being a UFA, 
uh, especially when I played it, it took 10 years. It's different nowadays, but um, you know, you have to see what the market has to offer. You could be one injury, you could be uh, very close to the end of your career. I wanted to be in Buffalo. Um, didn't work out that way because I, I, I couldn't say no to the offer that was on the table. After I left, I never felt the same. I never, when you play for one spot for 10 years, it becomes your home. Uh, it was my whole adult life at that time. I had moved here at 18 and I was 28, I believe, at the time. It's not the same. Who's better, McDavid or Crosby? Because you coached McDavid in junior. Yeah. And you um, played with Crosby. They're almost identical off the ice. And they are phenomenal human beings. They've been brought up the right way. They've had the right guidance. It's hard to say Connor's better than him right now. Yeah, I've never seen somebody skate the way McDavid does and do the things that, that Connor McDavid can do on the ice. You like cars. You know, let's name them in order from, from when you signed your first contract. You had a Blazer, you had an H1. NSX before the H1. Acura NSX. Yeah. When you don't come from money and you get into the NHL and, and you have something you really like, and for me it was cars. I, I probably had, you know, went through uh, uh, a new one every two or three years. Where, where were you in your life emotionally when you buy the International CXT? <laughs> <laughs> like that's something yeah. you think you had like little man syndrome or something. Yeah, I clearly did. Uh, <laughs> I had the CB, I had the air horn, I had the air brake. It wasn't one of these. You're, you got the big wheel like this and you're bouncing up and down. And when I was in Pittsburgh, we'd have a shootout at the end of practice. You'd have to go until you score. And there'd be one guy standing and whoever loses today has to wash Jesus' truck. And I had the CXT. And uh, sure enough, our coaches were in and bowed in the loss. So about two weeks later, I showed up with a bucket. I had a toothbrush for all the, you know, the fine nooks and crannies. I had soap and I walked into his office and said, here you go, Dan. You can wash my truck today. He, he did it. I'll give him credit. He got up and, and washed the truck that day. Actually, really good. It's actually really good. Mikey Weber did a pretty good Isn't job it, of it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This is the moment right here. You still got it, you think? David Blaine, can you, can you still levitate? <laughs> no. Right. I saw that. I want you to be a little more honest and not look. I was looking away. A real, a real magician doesn't have to cheat. Tell me when to cut. So it's definitely not in these four cards. It's still not, in here somewhere. It's not in these four cards. Okay. Two, three, four. Watch this. Is that your card? No sleeves, all right? One quarter. Yeah. Just the one quarter. Canadian one, two. So I'm going to take this quarter, give it to you. Okay. Throw it back over here. No one would do. I'm gonna try to get it. It doesn't always work the first time, but I'm gonna get it in that spot right there. Get it in there. I'm a retired hockey player, I'm a retired magician. Apparently it's not working, here we go. Too much fat in that Too bar. much fat. Here we go, it's gonna get in there. Okay, here we go, it's in the arm. Now watch this. Nothing in my hand. Your what card. the, come on! Thank you very much for being on Grill and I'm gonna help me fix my van. All right, Tow truck's you. here, gotta run, man. Appreciate right. it. Great grilled cheese with the cheese and some great grilling them with Jay McKee. What? You gonna get your van?